The Lord be with you. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus answered Andrew and Philip, saying, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor him, whoever serves me. The Gospel of the Lord. Brother John Meyer, who is to your name a priest, come forward. Present. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain Brother John to the responsibility of the priesthood. Do you know him to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people, and upon the recommendation of those responsible, I testify that he has been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and our Savior Jesus Christ, we choose John our brother for the order of the priesthood. Thanks be to God. Before you were ever even thought of, Brother John, 
God had you already in his mind for this particular mission. And these words that we all listen to in our first reading today are words not spoken to the prophet Jeremiah, but are words that are spoken to you and should, and should fill you as they fill each one of us with great confidence in the fact that you will not fail, that God has called you to this mission because God knows that you have the ability to answer the call. You are here today because He has created you for this particular moment. Your ordination is nothing more than the culmination of several years of careful discernment, fervent prayer, hard work, and of course, a generous outpouring of God's grace. But we should not forget that God, from the very beginning, had you in mind for this particular mission. Today also in our church, we celebrate the feast of the great martyr, deacon and martyr, St. Lawrence. St. Lawrence, who is mentioned every time you will mention, every time you celebrate the Eucharist and celebrate the Eucharistic prayer number one, you will recall Sixtus the Pope and Lawrence, who died martyrs during the Bavarian persecution. You will recall them and look for their strength and their example to live your own life because they fulfilled the mission and they fulfilled what is spoken to us in the Gospel of St. John today. Unless the grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it shall not bear fruit. Today, you are called to accept this responsibility. And in reading from St. John, we recall those words and must keep them very close to our hearts because we too, in many ways, will die on many occasions. We must die for ourselves. We must die so that we will live in Christ and for Christ. Unless that grain of wheat falls to the ground, it will not produce fruit. But we may ask, what is the fruit that it is supposed to produce in us? And St. Paul in the second reading today answers that question for you. For he says you must die, yes, following the words of the gospel. Die to ourselves, for we do not preach ourselves, St. Paul will say, but we preach Jesus Christ as the Lord. We become slaves of God, slaves of Jesus Christ, and our lives must be that light that shines before all nations. These are not just empty or poetic words, but words that every priest must keep always before his eyes. Undoubtedly, your mission from this day forward will be to show the light of Christ to the world, to a world, as our Holy Father Pope Francis recently said, that does not wish to hear and does not wish to see the power of Almighty God or to hear the words of Jesus Christ. We have to be that sign of contradiction as Jesus was in this time we are today as priests that sign of contradiction to our culture today. We have to become the medium, as it were, through which the people see God and through which we will bring God to the people. That, Brother John, is what you have been called today. This is what the priesthood is all about. Today, so many works and so many books are written and pamphlets are written about what it means to be a priest. Just yesterday, I received one recent publication 
which was entitled How to Be a Successful Parish Priest in Our World Today. But I was saddened as I read through, or I should not say read through, glanced through the pages of that booklet. Not once did I ever find in that booklet anything to do with what the priesthood is truly about. Not once did I mention the words or even comment on the words of the tradition of the church and the magisterium of the church. They did not speak to the document on the priesthood of the Second Vatican Council or the great Pope John Paul II's Pastores Davo Romus never mentioned, not even indexed at the back of the book. Not once did it mention Paul's letter to St. Timothy or Paul's constant admonitions to the Philippians, the Philippians with respect to what the nature of the priesthood is. How many books and how many times we as priests fail to understand what our mission is and that mission is to be the image of Jesus Christ in our world today and to preach as St. Paul says in the second reading not just ourselves but to preach the word of God in his letter to Timothy St. Paul goes on to clarify that above all a priest must be a man of God one who knows God intimately and one who has a profound personal relationship with Jesus Christ. One who is capable of sharing with other people in our world today the same sentiments when confronted with every situation that we find in our world. We must have the same sentiments in our hearts, in our souls, in our actions as Jesus Christ would have had were he present physically here at this moment. This is what the priesthood is all about. Why, brothers and sisters, may we ask ourselves why Pope Francis is so popular among people today? Why does his simplicity and his humility stand out among so many people today? And why do almost four million people stand on the beach in Rio de Janeiro and say, is this not a messenger from God? We all see it no matter how closed our minds may be. And yes, it goes back to the Gospel of St. John, when the grain of wheat does not fall to the ground and die. Well then, we as priests lose the very meaning of the priesthood. When we lose the focus on God and we begin to see ourselves as great teachers, great philosophers, or great theologians, or great parish administrators, whatever it may be that we do in our lives as priests, one thing is necessary and only one thing is essential. And that is God and the mission that God has given to us. That we have to be the image and the word of Jesus Christ in our society today. When we lose focus on Jesus Christ, well then we lose the identity of the priesthood. When we lose that sense of holiness and that mission of preaching the word, well then we are just mere actors on a stage. We may do many great things in life, but we will not bring the people to God. The priesthood today in our church, in our world, is in great need of men, of priests who are men of prayer, men of virtue, men of attent who are attentive witnesses, who give testimony with their lives to the mission and to the mystery of Jesus Christ. Brother John, today, the priesthood is a wonderful gift that Jesus gave to the church because of his wisdom and love.
and because of his great thirst for the salvation of all people and all souls. Our faith tells us that the priesthood involves not just different set of functions, but indeed a brand new identity in our lives. In this sacrament, our priest is forever and uniquely bound to Jesus Christ. Only when we, the grain of wheat that falls to the ground dies, so that it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me, may we have completed our mission. It is for this reason that the priest and in our liturgy and in this right today, we speak in terms of consecration. A priest is consecrated. In the preface we mention and say, a priest is a person who is set apart. Set apart, however, does not mean set above. A priest who thinks that he is above his people is an unworthy of the priesthood. You, Brother John, will be set apart. Set apart so that you can easily be recognized and identified as a servant, as a missionary of Jesus Christ. A man ready and willing to respond to the spiritual needs of those entrusted to your care. I urge you, Brother John, to remember always the great dignity of the priesthood that is conferred on you today. And in the words of St. Paul, to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received with all humility, gentleness, and patience. More than ever, this is the kind of a priest that the church needs. This is the kind of a priest that Jesus is calling you to be today. In a few moments, you will receive the sacrament of holy orders. We pray for you. And we pray that you will always be a holy priest. <coughs> and following the tradition of so many great priests here among your brothers at this dispersion of Abbey today. How many of those priests, how many of your brothers who have come before us have been great and authentic witnesses to the gospel of Jesus Christ? How many of them have died, have given all of their lives, all of their being? Excuse me. <coughs> To the mission of the priesthood. I personally thank God for the great mystery and for the great gift that this monastery is for our church and its disguises. <coughs> During the coming weeks, I urge you to reflect and meditate many times on the sacred readings of your ordination mass and the rite of ordination. Reflect and meditate, keeping in mind the very first line of the prologue of the Holy Rule of St. Benedict. <coughs> Listen carefully, my child, to my instructions and attend to them with the ear of your heart. With these words of St. Benedict, you should meditate frequently on the scripture readings of today's Mass and on the right of this holy ordination. And may God, who has begun this great work in you, bring it to completion. Amen. Dear Brother John, before you enter the order of the priesthood, 
You must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. Do you resolve, with the help of the Holy Spirit, to discharge without faith the office of the priesthood in the presbyteral rank? As a worthy fellow worker, in the order of wishes, Do you resolve to exercise the ministry of the word, wordily and wisely, preaching the gospel and teaching the Catholic faith? I do. <coughs> do you resolve to celebrate faithfully and reverently, in accord with the church's tradition, the mysteries of Christ, especially the sacrifice of the Eucharist? and the sacrament of reconciliation for the glory of God and the sanctification of the Christian people? I do. Do you resolve to ignore with God's mercy upon the people entrusted to you by observing the command to pray without ceasing? I do. Do you resolve to be united more closely every day to Christ the High Priest, who offered himself for us to the Father as a pure sacrifice, and with him <coughs> to consecrate yourself to God for the salvation of all? I do with the help of God. <coughs> Do you promise respect and obedience to the bishop and to your legitimate superior? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. My dear people, let us pray that God the All-Powerful Father will pour out abundantly the gifts of heaven of this his servant whom he has chosen for the office of priest. Let us kneel.
long year, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, author, author of human dignity. It is you who apportions all graces. Through you everything progresses. Through you all things are made to stand firm. To form a priestly people, you appoint ministers of Christ your Son by the power of the Holy Spirit, arranging them in different orders. Already in the earlier, in the earlier covenant, offices arose established through mystical rites. When you sent Moses and Aaron over your people to govern and sanctify them, you chose men next in rank and dignity to accompany them and assist them in their task. So too in the desert, you implanted the spirit of Moses in the hearts of seventy wise men, and with their help, you ruled your people with great ease. So also upon the sons of Aaron, you poured an abundant share of, your, of their father's plenty, that the number of the priests prescribed by the law might be sufficient for the sacrifices of the tabernacle, which were a shadow of the things to come. But in these last days, Holy Father, you sent your Son into the world, Jesus, who is a false and high priest of our confession. Through the Holy Spirit, he offered himself to you as a spotless victim, and he made his apostles consecrated in truth, sharers in his mission. You provided them also with companions to, a, to proclaim and carry out the work of salvation throughout the whole world. And now we beseech you, Lord, in our weakness, to grant us this helper that we need to exercise the priesthood that comes from the apostles. Grant, we pray, Almighty Father, to this your servant, the dignity of the priesthood. Renew deep within him the spirit of holiness. May he henceforth possess this office, which comes from you, O God, and is next in rank to the office of bishop. And by the example of this manner of life, may he instill right conduct. May he be a worthy co-worker with our order, so that by his preaching, and through the grace of the Holy Spirit, the words of the gospel may bear fruit in human hearts and reach even to the ends of the earth. Together with us, may he be a faithful steward of your mysteries, so that your people may be renewed in waters of rebirth and nourished from your altar, so that sinners may be reconciled and the sick raised up, May he be joined with us, Lord, in imploring your mercy for the people entrusted to their care and for the whole world. And so may the full number of the nations gather together in Christ, be transformed into your own people, and made perfect in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
the Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, so that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do, imitate what you celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual work. Charity, 
to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they develop their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by his body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. <clears throat> may he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Lawrence, St. Maria Goretti, St. Paul and John, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confer in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, with the order of bishops. This is your servant, who has been ordained today as a priest for the church, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. <laughs> Remember your servant Pastor, whom you have called today from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. When from the earth he will raise, he will raise up, he will rise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good.
that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace.
Let us pray. May the divine sacrifice we have offered and received, O Lord, give new life to your priests and to all your servants, that united to you in unfailing love, they may receive the grace of giving worthy service to your majesty. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing, I do want to say a special word of congratulations to Father John. Today is the culmination of many years of hard work and, of course, the blessings of our Lord Jesus Christ, who ultimately has called each one of us to our own vocation in life. And in this particular moment, is calling <coughs> Father John to a life of dedication and service as a priest of his. A priest here in this great order, Cistercian order, here in this abbey, here in Dallas. So I congratulate him. But as I congratulate him, I also want to say a word of thanks and appreciation to the family who are here, to his mother, to his brother, to his brother and his sister. Because a vocation to the priest here is fruit of not just one person, but rather God plants the seed in the heart of a person from the very beginning of time. But were that seed not cultivated in an appropriate way, it would never arrive, as it were, to be a beautiful flower to follow the example of a seed. But it would never arrive to its perfection to what God wanted it to be, were there not many collaborators. So I thank the mother, I thank the brother, the sister, and all of the family, and all of the many friends who are here, because it is a great effort on behalf of the family and the community of those who believe in Jesus Christ that enables us to arrive to this home. So congratulations, and may God always continue to bless you and to give you the grace to live up to this great he has called you. I do thank all of you who are here, but in a very special way, I thank Abbot Peter and Abbot Dennis, who have granted me the great opportunity and the great privilege and the honor to ordain ten, I believe, ten Cistercian priests in the brief time that I have been here in the city in the Diocese of Dallas. I certainly consider this to be a great honor and a great blessing. As I have said many times, most people don't realize the depth and the great gift that this Abbey is to the people of this area. And not just because of the wonderful education of the school, but above all, because of the testimony of life that they give to the testimony to the Word of God to the Gospel of Jesus Christ. They are a living example of what the Gospel is all about. So I do thank all of the priests and all of the brothers and this whole community and all of those people who come here regularly to support this Abbey and to support these priests in this great, mysterious, wonderful way of life that they live here each day. We ask God's blessing always upon them, and we thank them for everything that they've done. I also want to thank all of those who have made this celebration such a wonderful event today, and especially Father Ignatius, who tells them what to do with every twist in their Now, him, I don't know what I can do, but I do thank all of you so thank you, and may God bless you all. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing.
May God, who founded the church and guides her still, protect you with his unfailing grace, that you may faithfully discharge the office of priest. May God make you a servant and a witness of divine love and truth in the world and a faithful minister of reconciliation. May God make you a true pastor who nourishes the faithful with the living, the living bread and the word of life, that they may continue to grow in the one body of Jesus Christ. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you gathered here, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.